So anyone up for a demo? You can do something. So one of the, the main things that we find in the open source intelligence investigative world is that we have certain data that we start out with. So if it's an email address or whether it's a phone number or a domain, we take that and then our whole job is to find other places mostly online where that data has pivot points, where there's other data out there. For example, I'll start out with just john at example.com. Most people know about going to Google. With most people, they will get these results. And you can see there are, a, there are, there are almost uh, 12 million, 12 million, 12 billion results that have come back. So the next thing that we have to do is obviously narrow down Google's results. Maybe we're looking for john at example.com and we, we put it in quotes. So the quotes say john at example.com, that string itself has to appear in the results. And notice our results have come down to 132,000 results. So previously Google was chopping up the word john, example, and .com. And now it's saying, oh, john at example.com is in the results. So just by adding quotes, we have some good results. We can add other things too, if we're looking for other words, we can add keywords, we can remove keywords. For example, maybe I don't want anything with the word test in it. So I can use the dash symbol here or, or the, um, yeah, the hyphen to say, don't give me anything with the word test in it. I just took out another 30,000 results. And through this iterative process of creating keywords, searching them, using Google operators, and then refining your results using these Google operators, we can narrow Google and Yandex and DuckDuckGo and other results. But I mean, other people will, will tell you that Google's only one piece of the pie. For instance, let's just take johnexample.com and head over into the cybersecurity world of searching for breach data. Um, very common thing that we do is take an email address and see if it's been found in any breaches. Because if we can find that, then what we might be able to do is identify passwords and systems where the accounts of this person might be found. Have I been pwned, which is a site that you're probably familiar with, might be familiar with. We come over here and what we do is we paste in our john at example.com and we find, oh no, it's in 98 breaches and 33 pastes. Each time we're doing this, we're recording what we're doing. The most glamorous part about OSINT is documentation. And I say that with a big grain of salt. But what we're looking for is those pivot points. Here we have johnandexample.com, our target email address, and we see that it's on the 500 pick system. All right. Now I know that there may be an account over there that I might want to pursue or an animal jam or something. And each one of these bits of data has other things like in this breach, there's email addresses, passwords, and usernames. Whether it's it's an email address or we can start out with um, a site that I really like, which Technozet and Steven will attest to, um, what's my name dot app. Sometimes you don't start out with an email address or you start out with an email address of like webbreacher at Gmail. And you're like, wait, that webbreacher could be a username. Well, not only do we go through our process for email address searching, but we also might want to break that web breacher off and then search on like the what's my name dot app site. I'll search for something else, John Doe. All right. And this site takes one username. And when you choose the category that you want to search, it'll have your browser make over 370 requests to find other places where an account for that username exists. So here on Coder Wall, there's a, you can see the, the URLs down here, Reddit, there's a John Doe user account. Gab has a John Doe user account. Over here on the right-hand side, we have a nice little table that we can export to our notes. And now we have a huge number of other sites that we need to start investigating. And when we find those sites, we work through our process to harvest the avatars and the biographical information, the location data, and we continue to move, uh, gathering data, analyzing it, and pivoting. Just to add up to what Michael is saying is that we do need to check if all of these results are one and the same person, because there's a very high chance that somebody else on the world has the same username as well. So we need to visit all of these sites, pivot further on to see if everything matches, and 
then only you can conclude, well, John Doe indeed has over 72 other accounts on other platforms, which we can either connect to each other or connect to that one person we're pivoting on.